we are in the last days and of course there are several prophecies concerning the last days there are prophecies that talk about things like like the love of many waxing cold matthew chapter 24 and verse 12 because lawlessness will abound it says the love of many will wax cold and on the other hand there are prophecies that talk about the rising and the glory of the believer isaiah 60 and verse 2 talks about that even though darkness will increase it says that the lord will rise upon us with his glory so we see that there are two contrasting scriptures all talking about the the possibilities available to the believer in the last days all talking about what can become of the believer in the last days so it means that in the last days some believers their love will wax cold in the last days some other believers the glory of the lord upon their lives will shine forth more excellently and brightly so the question becomes how do we choose the category we fall into it's not just by merely desire it's not just by merely saying ah my love cannot wax cold god forbid <laughs> um it's about the intentionality because when we talk about love waxing cold the implication is that these ones were fervent once upon a time so love waxing cold is not that they have never been fervent their love has never been hot for the lord maybe they were they have been sitting on the fence ever since no he's talking about those that had a measure of fervency for god had a measure of love for god but now their love has been found to wax cold so when we talk about um love waxing cold it means one of the things we see from that verse of scripture is that it's not a sudden kind of experience it's not something that just happens suddenly it was a gradual process so when the wax begins to melt it is not suddenly it's gradual when an ice pack begins to defrost it's, it's it's a gradual process so when the scripture says the love of many will wax cold what we read into that scripture is that the love of many will gradually become cold so it's not a suddenly kind of experience it's an experience that the believer does not expect the believer does not anticipate it the believer does not even you know in his heart of hearts he, he didn't know that he could come to the point where he would not have any love for god so it's a gradual process you know um a songwriter wrote and said it's a slow faith casting crowns they sang the song some years back say it's a slow faith the dying of the love is a fading away it's a slow faith it's not an instantaneous thing that just happened maybe something just happened and then you find out that your love is gone you know it's something that is gradual the question we now begin to ask which was where the lord began to open my eyes is how did this happen or how can this happen so two days ago god was bringing to my heart one of the technologies that i believe that the devil is using in these last days to cause the love of many to wax gold love as we all know is a product of the heart it is the heart that loves that means that if the devil can reconfigure the heart can do something in the heart of the believer or in the heart of the one that loves then he can influence the love do you understand so what god was putting in my heart is uh, what I, I would call a consistent infiltration of the heart so it's a constant infiltration of the heart such that the believer does not realize that there is something being done to his heart you know it's just like um subtle indoctrination subtle re-engineering rewiring of the heart it occurs in a subtle way that you do not realize it until you find out that you are far gone the technology is simple and it is simply to constantly bombard the hearts of men with 4D, with things to defile their hearts, to dishonor God, to discredit God and the scripture, and to discredit his body. So the things the devil is turning out in the last days are geared towards doing four things. To defile the heart of the believer, to dishonor God, to discredit God and the scripture, and to discredit the body of Christ, which is the church. So you find out that a lot of things begin to fly around in the last days. Actually, when you read that scripture in Matthew 24 verse 12, he says, because lawlessness would abound. He says, the love of many will wax cold. What I can interpret from that scripture is that as a result of the multitude of lawlessness, there will be things that will happen in the heart of the believer that will begin to cause his love to wax cold. Do you understand? So in the last days, lawlessness would abound. And as a result of those lawlessness, the iniquity of men and all of those kind of things, the heart of the believer will be affected. Let me not say the heart of the believer, the heart of a believer can be affected. So the, the, the game being played by the enemy is to churn out a whole lot of things into our space that will dis defile our hearts, dishonor God, discredit God and the scripture, and discredit the body of Christ. 
So you find loads of content lying around on social media, you know, that is serving this agenda, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And you may even find some believers, you know, playing to the beating of the drum of the devil. I stumbled upon someone's post and the comments under the post and the believer was saying something like um, that Apostle Paul was just a believer like us. The apostles, they were just believers like us, that she has questions, you know, to ask Apostle Paul. And her point was that there are mistakes he made in the scripture. So she has questions for him when she sees him. You know, she was like that, that the writers of the scriptures wrote according to their experiences. So there are things that should not be locked. So, and she went now went on to say something like um, that, you know, we all have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is our teacher, and all of that, and all of that, and all of that. What she did not recognize she was doing is that she was discrediting the scripture. And in my mind, and I asked her, so what happens to the scripture that says, all scripture is god breathed So, when we begin to rise into this kind of wrong understandings, we play to the beating of the drum of the enemy. So, you now end up discrediting the scripture. Because I will not ask, okay, so anytime I am reading the Bible, I'm not confident again that this is the word of God. I should be asking the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, this is what I'm reading now. Is it, should it be cut away or is it, do you endorse it? So, so we, we, we can get to that point whereby we can discredit the scriptures. One of the things that the enemy, that the serpent did to Eve first before she fell was that he discredited the word of God. He says, did God really say? He was trying to, it was a mind game. He was discrediting the scriptures. So the things that, that are going on in the last days, the content on social media and all of those kind of things, they are serving a whole lot of agenda, whether knowingly or unknowingly, to defy the heart. So you find a whole lot of profane things, immoral things. So to defy the heart, to dishonor God, to discredit God and the scripture, and to discredit the body of Christ. You know, you find several platforms that think that they are doing a good work, that they are, you know, you find them posting you know, all manner of things. Pastor did this one, that one did that one. Uh, of course, they are, you know, they are fake prophets, right? But behind that agenda, whether they know it or not, is the discrediting of the body of Christ. Behind those actions, whether they realize it or not, is the discrediting of the body of Christ. So you find out that littered across the internet and, this, and, and social media are videos, posts, and sometimes the devil pushes these people into the church, right? It's, it's a game. So he pushes the um, that the wolves in sheep clothing, the fake prophets, false prophets, he pushes them into the church, in church in quotes, pushes them into ministry in quotes, so that by virtue of their actions, the church will begin to lose its value and importance in the hearts of men. <laughs> Are you seeing that? So it's a game that the devil is playing. So all manner of things are flying around. All manner of things, all manner of things, all manner of things. So the question becomes, how does the believer survive in the midst of all this? Guard your gates. What God told me two days ago was that we think that the things we are reading, the things we are watching, the things you, you are seeing online, that they are not affecting your heart. He says you are making a mistake. So we think we can consume all the content. Oh, I, I, I want to know what's going on in, you know, around me. Uh, you know, so you read about the uh, rubbish that people post, you know, discrediting one pastor or the other, the church or, or the other. You, you watch, you know, immoral videos, whether it, like reels and all of those kind of things. You open your heart to all manner of things flying around, you know, in, in, in social media. All manner of things. And God was saying that we think that they are not affecting our hearts. So we still gather every morning and we are together. And we think that we are okay. No, God says we are not okay. He says we are not okay. We don't understand the reprogramming that is going on in our hearts. One day, you will wake up and you begin to doubt the existence of God. And you are like, ah, where is this coming from? You begin to doubt the, the claims of our faith. You begin to doubt it. <laughs> you begin to doubt it. Why? Because over the years, it may take years, the devil can, can do something for years. You know, the plan, the Alice Belly plan, it was a plan that will work over 50 years. So the devil, spirit beings are not time bound. They are not time as time conscious as, as, as we are. So they can plan over a generation and begin to, to strategize and begin to unleash. So over the years, you keep watching all manner of things. You, you, you keep opening your heart to all manner of articles, write-ups, and all of those kind of things. And then you think that nothing is happening to you. God says you are not okay. You think you are okay, but you are not okay. So you go to social media, you watch every rubbish you see, you read everything you see, you listen to everyone talking down on God and His ways, you gob down all the content abusing and discrediting the church. And you think you are okay. You don't really know what is going on. You don't really know that your heart is being affected. Remember, we said that the heart is where love flows from. So as your heart is tweaked, as your heart is being re engineered and affected and influenced, 
your love will begin to wax cold and very soon you find yourself in a place where you have no regard for god and his ways you find yourself in a place where your life is drenched in every sin and you know you just don't care you find yourself in a place where you begin to doubt the existence of god you just find yourself in that place where you run off on your own tangent you find yourself in a place where your heart stops your heart stops beating for god so what's the way to go what's the way that the lord is pointing out proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 the scripture says guard your heart with all diligence so for out of this are the boundaries of life so you say guard your heart so you see that the heart is at the center is the central so it says guard your heart with all diligence so with any kind of with any measure you know be diligent in guarding your heart a lot of believers are not diligent in guarding their hearts they, we just quote that scripture guard your heart with all diligence but are we really guarding our hearts he says with all diligence so what it means is that if you find a channel that is dishonoring god guarding your heart is unsubscribing from that channel if you find a page on facebook that you follow that the reels the reels are instagram the reels facebook the reels tiktok are constantly defiling your heart you block that is being diligent in guarding your heart if you find someone that constantly makes content post write-ups that are antagonistic to your faith you will follow that is diligence in guarding the heart so you say guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the treasures of life or the boundaries of life or the fountains of life um if we back down to verse 20 and 21 we see that there are two gates actually that lead into the heart so if you must guard your heart the way to do to do that would be to guard the gates that lead to your heart so you must be intentional in guarding your gates so proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 says my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my saying do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart so through your ears and your eyes things enter your heart right so the eye gate and the ear gate are the gates that lead into your heart are the gates that lead into your heart so the scripture is saying that you must be careful on the food you eat in the realm of the spirit we eat with our eyes and our ears that's how we eat so you know i was listening somewhere yesterday and he was talking about the kingdom so he talked about the kingdom identifiers there are identifiers that mark a kingdom one of it is food of course you have the clothing you have the food you have the mindset you have the entertainment and all of that so each kingdom has a way of life has things that can identify so when you mention a particular food right they they okay for example if we say to it, it identifies the outer kingdom every kingdom is identified by her food so the question becomes what food are you eating in the realm of the spirit remember we eat with our eyes and our ears so the scripture is saying guard your eyes guard your ears mount a guard in your eye gates and in your ear gates so that you can restrict or see what enters into your heart so when you find something that will defy your heart you shut it out when you find something that will dishonor god you shut it out when you find someone that discredits the body of christ you shut the person out so in the last days to survive is not it's not by sentiment if you are emotional you will not survive in the last days so you must know what you are looking for what you want and be 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 fair on your value be firm on who you are so if there is a person a channel a a celebrity that you follow a facebook page that you follow and constantly the person is bombarding your heart with things that dishonor god this defile your heart discredit the body of christ discredit the word of god shut the person out shut down that channel shut down that page unfollow those people go through your phone and delete all manner of songs you have that does not honor god delete the movies you have that defile your heart that is the way to guard your heart when you want the guard at the door the guard is not just there for jokes the guard is there to determine who goes in and who does not so you are the guard at the gates of your heart the eye gate and the ear gate you are the guard so if you do not do your job you will find out that all manner of things will infiltrate your heart and in time to come you will not have any love for god so first of all it will shift you you start sitting on the fence and then from sitting on the fence someone used the story of um Eutychus, a man that fell when apostle paul was was teaching that's like a picture of how you know some believers die in the realm of the spirit first of all you sit on the fence you sit on the window you are not in before you were in of course the guy did not just jump from down and, and sat on the on the fence or, or you know at the window first of all he was in he sat there from sitting he slept so when you sit at the fence 
you will go into slumber. Then from slumber, you will fall and die. So it means that you must become intentional in guarding your ear gates and your eye gates. You need to be intentional and radical. Sanitize your space. There are some believers are just funny. And why, why do I say that we are funny? Um, we claim to love God, but we follow mostly unbelievers. <laughs> is, is, is it not funny? So we don't follow people that, that add value to our faith. We don't follow people that talk about the kingdom, that explain the scriptures, that cause our hearts to burn for the Lord. The majority of the people, the channels we follow are channels that just uh, are just appealing to the flesh. Channels that feed the flesh. And yet we claim, I love the Lord. And we come and we can sing, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. And we cry. But loving the Lord is intentional. <laughs> when you look at how God loved us, it was an intentional love. He says, because I love you, I will send my son. It was intentional. So because you love the Lord, there are certain things you should shut down. There are certain things you should shut out. And there are certain things you must intentionally bring in. That's what it means to guard your gate. So now I encourage everyone as I begin to wrap up. Pay attention to your eye gate. Pay attention to your ear gate. They, they, they seem harmless because their results are not instant. But over time, a believer that keeps on taking in all manner of things through the eyes and the ears will ultimately fade away and die. Ultimately. There is no two ways about it. Ultimately. <laughs> so, um, Apostle Paul will we, we'll say it this way. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that is what he will reap. So if you keep sowing to the flesh, how do you expect to reap the life of God? The place of your consistent and major sowings will reflect in your life ultimately. Father Lord, we thank you. I don't know if there are people here that you are repenting. You are saying, the first people I want to pray for or with are people that are repenting. You are already a believer. But as I talked, you were looking at you know, the content you've been consuming. And you want to say, Lord, I repent. Can you just go ahead? There is grace in this place. There is grace in this place. There is grace. There is grace. There is grace. And say, Lord, I repent this day of every deviating I have done, of every unintentional eating of meat prepared by the devil that I have done. Lord, sanctify me again. Sanctify my heart. Purge my heart of every meal that defileth. He says, for we will not defile ourselves with the portion of the king's meat. There are meat that you have taken that has defied your heart. And you say, Lord, purge my heart again. Purge my heart. 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 Purge my heart, Lord. Hi, all the fellows. Purge my heart, O Lord. Purge my heart, O Lord. By your mercy. By your mercy. By your mercy, by your mercy, purge my heart, by your mercy, Lord. Purge my heart, by your mercy, Lord. Is someone praying? Someone praying? And if you are here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, this is also your moment. This is also your moment. To say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. It is only with the help of the Lord and the Spirit of grace that you can go through the last days and come out in one piece he says that he will preserve you spirit soul and body he will preserve you spirit soul and body until they are appearing of our lord jesus there is the one that preserves it is when you come into partnership with him that you have the starting ability or you have the the capacity to be preserved can you say lord i accept you as my savior come into my heart I believe in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. I accept Jesus this day as my Savior and my Lord. In the name of Jesus. And so I pray for everyone that has made this decision in various ways. Um, the ones that have returned to you. The ones that are saying, Lord, from this day I will be more intentional. I have gone the way of filling my heart with vanities with contents that defy the heart, that discredit God, that dishonor God, discredit scripture, discredit the body of Christ. And Lord, I pray over these ones, that Lord, you will purify their hearts. Let there be the washing of their hearts by virtue of this word that has come this morning. Let there be the washing of their hearts. Let there be the washing of their hearts. Let there be the washing of their hearts. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, for the ones that are um, that have come to you in repentance and made you their savior, Lord, I declare unto them that their sins are forgiven. On the basis of your word, I pronounce them righteous in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for every one of them that all through their journey in life, Lord, it will be it will be a, 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 a journey in unity, united with you. They will walk with you. Lord, you would hold their hands, I pray, all through their journey in life. Lord, let their love work stronger and stronger. Let your glory be revealed, you know, better and better in and through their lives. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. I pray that we will not fall for the schemes of darkness. We will not fall into the orchestrations of darkness. We will not fall for the mind molding from hell. We will not fall for the subtle indoctrinations of darkness. Lord, I pray, open our eyes to the different ways that the enemy comes against our souls, comes against our hearts. In the name of Jesus, grant us the strength by the Holy Ghost to remain and to abide in you. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I release your grace upon everyone. I, re I release the power of the Holy Ghost upon everyone. In the name of Jesus, let there be a binding together. <laughs> let there be a binding together. You and the Lord, a binding together. You and the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Abba Father, we thank you. Our steps are guided. We will not walk into error. We will not walk into destruction. Um, the scripture says there is the way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death lord i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and i declare over every life that our feet are guided even in these last days in the decisions we make we are guided and we are guided in the name of jesus lord may we walk in line in step with the holy ghost in the name of jesus Abba Father, I declare over everyone that Lord, you will sustain everyone with the power of your word. Even as the treasure, because behind the scene, you know, also, you know, engendering the agenda of darkness is the treasure of the economy. The treasures, the treasures, the treasures. The treasures, the treasures. And so I declare that Lord, even as the treasures from the economy get more intense, Lord, that you will be our buffer in the name of Jesus. Lord, that your children will find their Goshen in the name of Jesus. I left us empty. I Lord, I feel on the eye. Cora feel the eye. Open our eyes, Lord, day by day. Open our eyes to see and to walk in our Goshen. Help us to find, bring us into our Rehoboth. Bring every one of us into our Rehoboth. In the name of Jesus, I declare fruitfulness over everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, let the grace of fruitfulness, let the spirit of fruitfulness rest upon you. The spirit that would that would define your work, define what you do, define that would guide you, instruct you in what to do, that will bring fruitfulness. Let that spirit rest upon you. The spirit that would bring favor into your life. Because on the one hand are the works, on the other hand is the favor. Lord, may this too be made manifest in everyone under the sound of my voice let your favor rest upon us in the name of jesus let your favor rest let your favor rest let your favor be made manifest i activate favor in our lives in the name of jesus let the holy ghost who is our guide guide you into rest in the name of jesus abba father we thank you for the overflowing streams you know, fella, not a hearty fella. That the streams that come from the sanctuary, they have a healing. They have a healing capacity. They have a restoration, a restorative capacity. They have the capacity to make wealthy. He said, one of the one of the streams, you know, encompassed a land, and then gold was found in that land. I declare over everyone 
let the waters that flow from the throne let that water be activated and bubble within you flow over you bringing you healing where you need healing whether in the body at the level of the soul or at the level of the spirit let there be healing right now in the name of jesus let there be healing i rebuke every spirit of infirmity be gone in the name of jesus i declare the healing waters over your life let the stream bring you into abundance in the name of jesus let the stream lead you kai tembo felede shaman bon feletai kami feleta the river flowed from eden and then if you follow that, that that river it will lead you to gold may that river begin to instruct your heart may that river begin to guide your heart begin to lead you to your wealthy place in the name of jesus Abba Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen.